in this video, I want to talk about if you're a doctor and you're really burned out, how can you take a break? So the first way would be asking your CMO or looking for an organizational policy that allows for a leave of absence. So in my organization, you can take leave and it just has to be approved by your CMO, basically. I did not do that. I sort of felt that she would say no, but you can definitely um, do that. The second option would be taking FMLA. So FMLA is what you can take for pregnancy, but you can also take it to support um, a health condition that you have. For me, it was anxiety. So I was able to have my doctor write me a letter and it basically served as that leave of absence from my organization and then also entitles you to protection of your job. Say you take a break and then you wanna go back they can't fire you, they have to hold your job for you. So that's really important, um, especially if you just wanna take a break rather than leave the organization entirely. So there are qualifications for the, this, which you can look at online. I believe it's 12 months of working there for 12 consecutive months of work. So just check with the website and then your organization as well. So the third way would be disability. And disability is also something you'd have to look up if you qualify for. It's basically, you have to make sure that you've worked in that job for enough time as like a wage collecting employee. And that also in like, basically looks at your whole employment history. So there's a calculator on edd.gov that you can look up, which I recommend. But basically they estimate your payments based on the wages that you've gotten in the past so as a doctor they might require more supporting documents from your doctor or whoever's writing your note because your wages are higher so they're going to need to probably justify it a little bit more but it shouldn't shouldn't be a problem and disability i didn't know this but i was worried that if i have rental income or other income that the irs would come knocking on my door after taxes and say you know, why did you qualify for disability? You still had other income. So as long as that income is not from an employer, like another wage, then you're fine. So this means you can still collect your rental income. You can still have a business. You can still basically collect money from any other source other than a wage as a doctor. So, and it can't be like from a business or yeah, it can't, if it's from a business as a doctor, then that's fine and you don't have to report it on your taxes, which is great because it's non-taxable. It's something that you've already paid into and then they are sort of giving back to you. And I wish I had known that earlier. I probably would have taken a break in my life earlier. The fourth way is third-party disability. So through my organization, I actually already had a policy and so they paid me up to 30% of my salary and it was the same documentation that I needed for my FMLA, basically a physician or therapist writing a qualifying condition or diagnosis. And then the other way is just to quit. <laughs> but I would really encourage you to look into these other ways of taking a break before you actually decide that you wanna leave the organization. For me, I was pretty much done. I had been there for three years. I knew it was time to move on. But taking FMLA gave me a little bit of a, a buffer uh, to change my mind and to also continue my benefits with the organization before I was fully on my own. So even though my termination date will come up and I won't and I will no longer be an employee or on FMLA, my disability will still continue and I'll still collect those benefits. I just won't get or I'll still collect those payments, but I won't get the benefits from my organization. So your girl's gonna go on Obamacare, <laughs> which is fine. And some other ways you might wanna think about if you need a break is to do per diem or telehealth. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility. And I've worked per diem before and I've worked like two days a week and it was great. And I feel like they honor your boundaries a lot more because you're like, I'm here from this time to this time. And so the work doesn't quite get piled on and the expectations aren't as crazy when you're per diem and it's really nice. You can kind of just focus on you and the patient. So I hope you 
got a lot out of this and really consider your rights and talk to people that can help you.